What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. In this one, we're talking about the Ogden, Utah housing market. This is an area that gets a lot of inquiries. A lot of people see Ogden, Utah online as one of the best places in the nation to live because it's such a vibrant area, but it's actually one that I don't talk about much here on the channel. Not because I don't want to, just because I have so many other things to talk about. In this video though, we're gonna dive into the statistics on what's happening with prices, what's happening with sales, and what's actually happening in the market. I have a lot of questions. A lot of people are reaching out, such as yourself, saying, hey, Cody, I'm thinking about moving to Utah. What's going on with prices in each of these different areas? And this video here is going to address exactly that for the Ogden, Utah area. Now, as we jump into this, if you don't already know, my name's Cody Steck. I'm your favorite Utah realtor. I love helping people buy and sell real estate here in the state. So if you're watching this video thinking, hey, I want to buy a home, I want to sell a home, I am your go-to guy. I'd love to be your resource of choice. And when it comes to that, you can find my contact information here on the screen, call, text, or email anytime, and let's have a chat about your situation. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into my screen here and take a look at some statistics and some data. So if you scroll in here, let me actually zoom in here so we can get a better look at this. So we are currently sitting here uh, in the middle of February filming this video. So we do have a little bit of information for February, but I first want to actually look at January of 2023. This is the first full month of data that we actually have, which is going to be the most accurate. Sometimes with the month of data that we have here for February, it's not going to be entirely accurate because we're still in the middle of the month and it hasn't fully updated. So it does give us a little bit of a taste right here, but we do want to actually look at this month here first. So that being said, you can see here in January 2023, we saw 383 home sales. That's what this column right here states. And this is a huge drop from December of 2022. We are actually at 500 home sales in December and we dropped to 383. So that's a massive, you know, that's like a 22, 23% drop from what we saw the month prior. Now, if we take a uh, look at this, if we come back here to January of that year, we were at 513. And if we go back even another year, uh, we are at 524. So for this area specifically, uh, you're going to see that you're roughly 500 home sales in the January, in the month of January each year. However, this year it was much lower. We only saw 383 home sales. I should also mention that this data set that we're actually looking at covers Weber and Davis counties. I grouped these together because they often get uh, grouped together anyway. When somebody's talking about the Ogden area, they're basically talking about everything that is north of downtown Salt Lake. As you move onto the north end of downtown Salt Lake, you leave Salt Lake County and go into Davis County and then into Weber County, which is where Ogden actually sits. It's a much different market and what we see in Salt Lake. That's why I've grouped these two counties together to kind of cover the entire Ogden metro area. So that being said, we had 383 home sales in January and let's take a look at pricing. So these are the two most important columns when it comes to pricing. Let me zoom in here again. And you can see that we actually saw home prices drop pretty substantially uh, in January of this year. We were at $430,000 on the sales price, right? So this first column here is the listing price, the original listing price. And this one right here is the actual sales sales price of those properties. So if we go back here, the ultimate uh, top of the market was at 510,000 in June. And that was actually the top of the sales market as well for actual sales prices. So we saw 510,000 was the median price back in June of 2022. So this actually peaked a little bit later than what we saw in Salt Lake and Utah counties. So we're at 510, you can see the steady climb here going all the way back to the summer of 2021. We're in the low 400s. We quickly uh, climbed up to the mid 400s and then just had this huge jump. I mean, going from from January to April last year was just absolutely insane. We saw prices go from 440,000 to 505,000 in four months. That's not sustainable, guys, right? Of course, we're going to see prices come down. Uh, we did see a slight drop here, but nothing significant. And then we actually topped out here in June at 510. And you can see how quickly it fell off as people started to say, wait, we think interest rates are going up or we're seeing interest rates going up. We're going to start seeing prices come down. And they did. They came down substantially. We saw almost a $50,000 um, drop in prices right here. It did climb up just slightly into August. And then it did, um, you know, kind of slowly has been trickling down. We were at 450, 450, 443, 445. And then last month we were at 430,000. So this actually takes us back to the pricing that we saw in December of 2021, right? The last time we saw 430,000 on pricing was back here in December of 2021. So we still have a long way. I know there's a lot of people out there who are saying, hey, we need to get back to pre-COVID prices. 
I just don't see that happening, guys. To be honest, I mean, let's go back. Let's take a look at what prices were pre-COVID. Uh, if we go back here to like, I don't know, let's say winter of 2019 into 2020, we saw home prices in the high 200, low 300 range back at this time. I just don't see home prices falling that low. Yes, they've come down substantially, but I don't see them falling another $130,000. I just don't think it's going to happen. I think we could fall to probably, uh, let's say the high 300 range, you know, get up to like 380, 390. Um, but at that point, we're going to see a lot of people start to jump back into the market and start picking up houses. We're already starting to see a little bit of that as we go into the uh, end of winter and into the beginning of spring. But as of right now, you know, prices I think are going to be a little bit flat. They're going to be a little bit uh, volatile over the next couple months. But this is what we're looking at. The other thing I want to mention here is um, this percentage, right? Because this is the percentage of what homes actually sold for based on their original listing price. So you can see that some of these months here are well over 100, percent you know, 105. percent This means that a home was listed at 425, but actually sold for over that asking price at 445 right so you heard a lot of people say hey we're trying to sell our home uh, they list their home they get 20 offers all of a sudden the home sells for way more than they actually listed it for that very rarely happens in fact it's probably only happened a couple times in history when it's when you look at the whole market right I'm sure there's been certain homes that have had that happen but it was, it was basically every single home was in that position where a home would get listed, people are just bidding it up, and all of a sudden it's selling for way more than it's listed for. That's what actually caused prices to jump up substantially during this time. I mean, look at the listing price here. It was pretty flat actually from about August of 2021 to February, right? If you actually take a look at this column here, from August 2021 to February is roughly 425, you know, plus or minus a little bit each month, but then it jumped up substantially. In just a couple months here, we saw it jump up to 400. 190,000 and then even on to 510 here in June. So uh, you can see these percentages here, but look at how they've dropped off as interest rates have started to climb, right? We're at 98%, the 96, 94, 92, 91. And basically what this tells me is that home sellers were still keeping their home on the market at the pricing that they thought they were going to get back in the beginning of 2022. There was a lot of home sellers who saw these sales prices here, you know, saying, oh, this home sold for 500,000. I think my home's worth 500,000. So here in August, they go ahead, they list their home for 500,000. And sure enough, they don't actually get that, right? There's less demand in the market and homes sell for uh, significantly less than what they're actually listed for. So this home, you know, for August, you're at 96%, 94, 92, 91, 91. Actually in January, we uh, January, we saw a little bump up here. I think that's largely due to the fact that many home sellers um, finally started to realize, hey, uh, prices are coming down. We need to actually list our home a little bit lower than what we think because this is where the market's actually at, right? They're looking at the sales data for here, you know, saying, hey, 443, 445, let's list at 460 and then actually hope to get a sales price here in this range. Well, unfortunately, that didn't quite happen. Sales prices ended up a little bit lower, but still that brought this ratio up right here. So that being said, the last thing to look at here is this last column, which is the days on market. You can see that days on market has been climbing steadily. Uh, you know, we're up to 42, 43, 51, 54. It's been climbing. I do think that it will probably climb as we go into February and March, and then might actually see a decrease into the spring depending on what interest rates do and depending on what house prices do. So with that being said, that kind of gives you an overview on what's happening with the market. I do actually want to give you guys a couple of examples from what I'm seeing personally with my experience in the market. Even still with home sales slowing down, I've been extremely busy. We've had tons of people reaching out and we've had tons of people shopping for homes. I get people who actually ask me, hey Cody, I want to buy a home. What will I be able to negotiate on that home? And I've been telling people, you're probably going to be able to negotiate at least two to 5% off of the original listing price and also get the seller to cover some of your closing costs along the way. This is something that we haven't seen in about three years now. I haven't done any closing costs up until recently, um, any closing cost contributions from the seller for years. I mean, it's basically been years until recently when we're starting to see that make a resurgence. So if you're a buyer looking to jump into the market, there's actually a lot of opportunity right now. I think we're gonna start to see home prices kind of start to level off. It'll depend on the market, it'll depend on the home and which neighborhood it's located in, but we've already seen home prices come down substantially. I think we're starting to hit kind of a little bit of a plateau. We might see home prices dip a little bit, but if you're in this for the long run, as I've always been saying here on the channel, if you're looking to buy a home here, you should be planning to hold it for at least two to three years to make sure that it's a good investment. If you're not going to be owning the home for at least two years, you shouldn't even worry about trying to purchase a home because it's not going to make sense. There's a good chance you'd actually lose money on it in that time frame. 
However, if it makes sense for you and your position and in your life to make a purchase right now, then it might be something you want to consider. You might say, hey, it makes sense for us because we just had a baby and now it's time to make the move and we need to buy a bigger home you might want to look at purchasing, right? If you're going to live there for more than a couple of years, there's a good chance you could come out ahead as over the long run, home prices do tend to increase. And as we get through these higher interest rates and rates come back down to a more reasonable amount, I do expect that we'll actually see uh, prices pick back up. And over the long run, prices here in Utah will just continue to climb. That's what real estate has done for hundreds of years. And it will do that for hundreds of years into the future as well. And that's why real estate makes such a good inflationary hedge over the long run, right? It's an investment in your future. If you purchase today and you hold on to it for 30 years, you're almost absolutely guaranteed to make money in that scenario. So to kind of give you an overview of the market and what we're actually seeing here in Ogden, we're actually seeing a lot of buyers enter the market and be able to successfully negotiate somewhere between two to 5% off of the listing price, as well as get a concession to help them with their closing costs or a rate buy down or some other form of incentive from the seller. So that's what we're seeing on the buying side. Now for sellers, we're actually starting to to see a lot of home sellers get more realistic about the market and actually price their home where they think it should be. There's a lot of homeowners who think that their home is worth more than it actually is. And unfortunately, that's just not the reality. If you're looking back at the market thinking you're going to sell for the prices that we saw back in spring of 2022, it's just not going to happen, right? That's not going to happen. The demand is not there. Nobody's going to pay a price that high when there's many other options on the market now today. So as a seller, you have to do, you do have to get a little bit realistic about it. Home prices have come down but hopefully you're still able to make a profit on the home sale. Again, if you've held the home for at least a couple of years, you're going to make a profit anyway. So you should still be happy with that. With that being said, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and also check out the newsletter in the description box below. We send out a weekly newsletter talking about living in Salt Lake City. We cover a lot of information that we actually don't talk about here on the channel. And if you want to be a part of that, make sure to sign up. There's a link in the description box below. And last, don't forget to reach out to me, call, text, or email anytime. I want to be your trusted real estate resource when it comes to buying or selling real estate here in Utah. With that said, guys, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.